Nicholas, how do you cope with health problems when they arise? Do you go to a doctor of official medicine? I just don't have time to go through polyclinics and sit in lines. I know that each person there gets 12 minutes. I'd rather spend those 12 minutes thinking or reading books. The fact is, my whole family is physicians of different types. My father was a professor, a biochemist, and a pharmacist. He developed new drugs for the front during the war. My mother worked in a military hospital as a therapist. Then she worked in St. Petersburg's 5th Street Alexis Hospital. My brother is a veterinarian, and his wife also. My grandfather was an otolaryngologist. In short, everything was dealt with. We treated people or animals. All my relatives brought benefits to the people around them. They treated them. I was the only one dealing with animals. I know the world of animals, but of course, I do not know how to treat them. I study them, I devise methods for preserving certain species of animals. Why are you interested in technologies that are not connected with official medicine? After all, you did not accidentally meet with Arkady Petrov. Why are you interested in his technology? The life system of Arkady Namovich Petrov is so organic and unique that it would be strange not to pay attention. It would be wrong not to go and not listen to this unique person who speaks directly with the universal mind. There are people, of course, who do not know anything about Petrov and live quietly. I learned about it, bought these books, read. I studied the doctrine of the tree of life. And I am in a state of admiration and astonishment at these books. But this does not mean that I have understood everything about what there is in there. This is a very deep philosophy. If I were 20 years younger, I probably would have understood it better. Now I just read and admire. This, of course, is very interesting and in many ways mysterious. I rejoice at every meeting with Arkady Namovich Petrov. When I have time, I always come to his seminars or lectures. I get great pleasure when I listen to him. As he says, how he talks with the public. One feels that here is a wise and well-mannered person speaking to you. Listening, you feel the flow of very positive, kind information. All this can be called a theater of good deeds. I feel this behind everything about what he speaks. 
правда. There is a truth. Когда uh, Генри Стэнли после двух лет поисков Дэвида Ливингстона приходит в какой-то селине, еще не знаешь, что их вдруг видит белого человека, такой редкость, а Дэвид Ливингстон остался в одном из племен, решил стать там миссионером. David Livingston was a missionary and taught the natives the basics of Christianity. Henry Stanley was surprised and said, Mr. David, I assume. Dr. Livingston, I presume. David, I assume. So I believe that organ regeneration is quite possible. I myself have not participated in regeneration experiments. But it's not a question of believing or not believing. I know that many animals in the wild have the ability to regenerate organs. For example, amphibians or reptiles. But with us, people's wounds are healed. I believe that a special method is used that anybody can regenerate some organs. I'm not sure that you can regenerate all organs, but surely some you can. It is obvious, because there are documents that prove I think that Arkady Yunamovich Petrov really manages to do it. He has documents that people have recovered organs that were previously removed. For he himself is one of those people who managed to regenerate himself a kidney, and this is an additional factor that convinces him of his correctness. He, after all, has documents confirming the removal of the organ, so there is no question of believing or not believing, because these are facts confirmed by documents. What can we talk about here? Of course, you can close your eyes and say that this cannot be, because it cannot be ever. But this is such a Philistine, unenlightened view of things. It took place. It is necessary to understand. It took place. But official medicine categorically does not accept this. Well, that's understandable. Official doctors are simply afraid to take responsibility for approval of this possibility. But when there is a large number of cases, 50, 60 or more, they will have to admit it. It's necessary to wait when these methodologies will be applied more widely. It will be insulting for those who deny them. Meanwhile, the Academy of Sciences has created a whole commission called the Pseudoscience, which is struggling with such methodologies. I believe that the creation of such a commission is very awkward and ugly on the part of the Academy of Sciences. They must remember that many very important sciences were also considered pseudosciences 50 years ago. This already happened in my lifetime. For example, genetics, cybernetics, even linguistics. Well, are we going to repeat these same mistakes, step on the same rake? Many things that previously seemed to be miracles in time become quite familiar.